Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the second installment today of Game Theory and we were discussing Maximin and Minimax play. Uh, what we're going to do next is extend our analysis into the space of mixed strategies. Um, so we want to incorporate mixing. Uh, first thing we want to do is redefine the concept of Maximin and Minimax strategies uh, utilizing mixing. Uh, so this is it. All we're going to do is extend the strategy space now to the set of probability distributions which we call Delta SI. Uh, and our uh, definition just changes a little bit uh, and you can see here is the nature of the change now we're considering mixed strategies for player I uh, as he is maximizing on the outside in response to the opposition trying to minimize uh, his payoff uh, likewise we can also redefine the minimax strategies and payoffs for player I uh, by again extending the strategy space of the other players to the sets of probability distributions S minus I with the delta in front of it uh, and here is the uh, corresponding change for the definition of the minimax strategy. Uh, again, you can see now we're looking over uh, mixing uh, on the outside optimization problem uh, for the whole nested optimization problem. And we can now reconsider our uh, example before. Um, so all we're going to do now is allow players 1 and 2 to randomize. So just again imagine like we usually do that 2 uh, randomizes by assigning probability p to l and 1 minus p to right. Uh, likewise, probability uh, player 1 is going to assign probability Q to the strategy U and probability 1 minus Q to the strategy uh, D. Um, so uh, we want to now uh, solve for the maximin uh, strategy and payoffs for player 1 in terms of mixed strategies. Um, so what we're going to do is plot player 1's expected utility as a function of his own mixing probability and we're going to do this for both possible strategy choices of player 2. Okay, so first thing, note that the expected payoff for player 1, if he plays left, is going to be uh, 15q minus 10 because he gets uh, 5 with probability q and negative 10 with probability 1 minus q when player 2 is playing left. Uh, likewise, his expected payoff uh, when a player 2 is playing r is going to be 4 minus 9q because player 1 is getting negative 5 with probability q and he's getting 4 with probability uh, 1 minus q. Okay, so now that we have uh, our expected payoffs as functions of our own strategy for both options of what the other player strategy choices could be, uh, we can plot the expected payoff uh, for player 1 um, for each possible strategy that player 2 is choosing. So this blue line that we've plotted here, uh, that corresponds to this function 15q minus 10. So you notice the vertical intercept is at negative 10, and when q is 1, the expected utility of player 1 goes all the way up to 5. Uh, and this again corresponds to player 1's expected utility when player 2 is playing the pure strategy L. So we'll just label that L. Uh, likewise, we can plot the other expected payoff function uh, that corresponds to when player 2 is playing R. Um, and if we were to set these expected payoffs equal, we could figure out exactly what that probability is, right where they cross, which turns out to be 7 over 12. And if you were to plug 7 over 12 back into either expected payoff function, uh, doesn't matter since we just set them equal, uh, you can figure out the expected utility that corresponds to that particular choice of probability by player 1. Okay, so... Uh, once we've done this now, we can sort of think a little bit more critically about how player 2 would think about punishing player 1 by solving the inside minimization problem of the maximin nested optimization problem. Uh, so we can do that now. Let's consider the inside here. Okay, and first thing we'll notice is if Q is lower than 7 over 12, if player 2 wanted to try to hurt player 1, the best way she would do that is by playing L because uh, it'll put player 1's expected utility along the green portion of the L line there, uh, which you'll know is below the red portion. So if she were to play R, it would give player 1 actually higher utility, so playing L is the optimal punishment in that sense. Now, on the other hand, if Q is bigger than 7 over 12, uh, then the opposite is going to be the case. Player 2 would wind up choosing R in order to pay off minimize against player 1, Okay, uh, so the thing to notice here now is when player 2 is optimally minimizing, punishing player 1, that holds player 1 to the uh, bottom envelope of this graph, which I've highlighted here in green. Now, that is the solution 
to the interior optimization problem from player two's perspective, which means all that's left from player one's perspective is to choose his strategy Q that would maximize his utility given how player two is already solving the inside optimization problem. So now that we move to the outside of the optimization problem, I think life is pretty easy now, hopefully. Uh, so player one needs to look at this set of payoffs and choose his mixing probability to maximize his payoff along that uh, lower envelope there. Uh, and you'll notice the payoff that does that for him uh, is gonna be negative five force, which corresponds to player one uh, playing Q with exactly the probability seven over 12 to put him at the top of that uh, lower envelope of the graph. Uh, what that implies is that by setting Q equal to seven over 12, player one is able to guarantee himself that expected payoff of negative five over four, regardless if player two tries to punish him with either L uh, or R. So uh, just note here that mixing has actually allowed player one to improve his, min, uh, his max min payoff above the negative five value, which we had found in the previous video segment uh, when he was only using pure strategies to defend himself. Uh, so in this sense, being a little more flexible and considering a mixing regime allowed player one security strategy to improve his situation against player two being extremely vindictive and trying to minimize his payoff. Um, so uh, we could easily extend this to the minimax case. Uh, unfortunately, we're running a little short on time on this video. Um, so let me just explain how to do that. So everything we did by employing mixing to find maximum strategies and payoffs for player one can be done for the minimax case as well. Uh, what we're gonna wind up doing now is we would plot the expected utility of player one against the probability P, which is player two strategy. And then we can consider what is the uh, best response for player one for different values of P in order to find what I would refer to as the upper envelope of the graph. Uh, and this would correspond to player one's best response to various values of P. Uh, and you can do this for both of player one's pure strategies. Uh, then what we'd do is we'd solve the outer minimization problem from player two's perspective by then choosing the probability P that puts player one's utility at the minimum value along that upper envelope. And this would yield player one's minimax payoff uh, by finding player two's minimax strategy. Uh, hope that clarifies any confusion and happy hunting.